A matrix is a rectangular array of numbers. We number the rows from 1 to m, let's say, starting at the upper left. We number the columns starting at the upper left from 1 to n. We also sometimes refer to a matrix by its diagonals. So if you start at the corner, the upper left corner, that's diagonal number 0, or the main diagonal. And then if you go below that, you get a negative diagonal. If you go above, you get a positive diagonal number, and so on. We'll use a capital AIJ to represent the element of matrix A at row I and column J. So it always goes row, then column. And I'm going to try to underline the matrix names to make them stand out a little bit. Sometimes we'll just write that it's the matrix of its entries AIJ. One matrix operation is the transpose. So we write a superscript T and Instead of AIJ, we get AJI over the same range, which means that the rows of the original matrix become the columns of the transpose and vice versa. So if the matrix started out as M by N, its transpose is N by M. Now addition and subtraction of matrices is very simple. The sum or difference of two matrices requires that the matrices be the same size that's the same number of rows and columns. And then you either just add or subtract element-wise. Multiplication is much more complicated. So we'll start talking about multiplication with vectors. These are special matrices that have only one row or one column. Our default choice will be to have column vectors. There are two types of vector products. They go by the names inner and outer. For the inner product, we have two vectors that are both column vectors of the same length. So they both have m rows. And then we define the inner product of these vectors as a sum over the products of corresponding elements. So this is a generalization of what you learned in calculus as the dot product in three dimensions. And sometimes it's called the dot product in higher dimensions too. Now the outer product is not the same thing as the cross product, by the way. So in the outer product, you have column vectors possibly of two different lengths. And the outer product is the matrix of all possible pairwise products. In other words, you take one of the elements of U and one of the elements of V, multiply them together, you get a whole matrix of results, M by N. It can be useful to think about the shapes of what are, what's going on here. So in the inner product, you have a row times a column because we transposed the first one. And the result is just a number or what we call a scalar. With the outer product, you have a column times a row. And the result has the dimensions that are the outer dimensions of those two vectors. So it's a matrix. Here's an example of these products on a couple of small vectors. So for the inner product, you transpose V. We just add up 1 times 2, 0 times negative 1, and negative 2 times 3. And the answer is negative 4. We could also do the inner product in the other order, V transpose U. So you just swap the positions of those two vectors. Well, it's exactly the same. You're still multiplying the same, num the same pairs of numbers together. So you get the same result. Now we have an outer product, UV transpose. So that's column times row. Right? And the first vector tells you um, a multiplier for each row. The second one tells you the multiplier in each column. So first we just get a copy of 2, negative 1, 3. Then we get 0 times that vector, and then we get negative 2 times that vector in the third row. Now we could also do the outer product VU transpose. So again, switch the order of the vectors. So we get 2 times 1, 0, negative 2. Then we get negative 1 times that vector. Then we get 3 times that row vector. And you can see now that these two outer products are not the same thing. So this is our 
first encounter of a, a general statement that matrix multiplication is not commutative. So a times b is not equal to b times a in general, even if both sides are defined. Now let's move on to more general types of matrix multiplication beyond vectors. So a is an m by n matrix, and b is assumed an n by p matrix. So these inner dimensions, the n's, have to be the same. Otherwise, the product isn't defined. So we'll give two versions that are equivalent. So we'll write the A matrix in terms of its rows. And since our vectors are always column vectors, we have to transpose them so that they have the correct shape. So A has m rows, and each row has n columns. So these are row vectors, each one with length n. B matrix will write in terms of its columns. So it has p columns, and each column has length n. Now we're ready to define the product of a times b. Let's call it c here. Then the ij element of c is the inner product between row i of a and column j of b. So we can think of it as an m by p matrix of inner products. The second version of matrix multiplication, we're going to reverse the situation. So we'll write A in terms of its columns. Each column has length m. And we'll write B in terms of its rows. So these are not the same symbols as before. We're choosing different vectors here. And then we can write the product AB as a sum of outer products between the columns of A and the rows of B. Each of those outer products is m by p, because those are the outer dimensions of the vectors involved in them. This definition in terms of outer products is probably not familiar to you. It's the least commonly known one. but In some ways, it's the most interesting one. Um, so it's interesting especially to see how it plays out in a special case where you have a matrix times a vector, one of the most common things that we have to do. So if we have A is m by n, with its n columns, and now x is a vector that's n by 1, so that A times x is defined. So if we write x in terms of its rows, of course, each row is just a scalar, which means that if we think about the outer product definition, it's just the outer product of columns of A with rows of x. In other words, it's what we call in linear algebra a linear combination of the columns of A. This is an important fact we'll come back to over and over again. To recap, then, we can multiply an m by n matrix A and an n by p matrix B, and then the result is m by p inner dimensions have to match, then the result has the outer dimensions. The big news, of course, is that matrix multiplication is not commutative. The order of the terms does matter in general. Fortunately, we do have a number of other useful identities and properties. The associative property does hold, so the order of operations when we do multiplications doesn't matter. That turns out to be incredibly useful. There's also an identity involving the transpose. The transpose of a product is the product of transposes in the opposite order. There's a very important type of matrix called the identity matrix, which we usually call I. It's a diagonal matrix, so it's zero everywhere except on that main diagonal where it equals one everywhere. When we write it in terms of its columns, it's traditional to use a lowercase e. So e sub k is the kth column of the identity. And when you look at the structure of it, the rows are the same things transposed into row vectors. So the identity matrix has the property that i times b is b and c times i is equal to c whenever the sizes work out so that those products are defined. 
Finally, another thing that comes in handy is what we might call block structuring of matrices. So the, the idea here is that you can write a matrix in terms of smaller pieces that aren't necessarily scalars, and that when you do so, things still look the same. So for instance, a very common situation is when we have A times a matrix B. If we write B in terms of its columns, then that's equivalent to taking A times each column inside. So we can write that matrix matrix product as a bunch of matrix vector products. As another example, we could write two matrices in two by two block form. And then when we multiply them, the blocks multiply just as though they were scalars. So as long as the sizes are correct and you keep things in order because of the non-commutativity, this will work. 